In this video, we want to look at the pathogenicity, clinical features of Ascaris lumbricoides. <clears throat> what we have seen in the previous video, let us take a recap. <clears throat> Ascaris lumbricoids, uh, these are the Ascaris lumbricoids. They are round worms. They are parasites. They are helminths. So, the, they are parasites. They are helminths. The most common uh, human helminth. It is uh, under helminths. It comes under nematodes. It's the largest nematode infecting humans. Its habitat is the small intestine. <clears throat> it is actually the common name is round worm okay and uh, it is present a lot in lot of people ascaris lumbricoids uh, the morphology is that uh, the male is smaller than female it has in the uh, posterior end a curved uh, hook with two copulatory spicules female is longer bigger the posterior end of female is going to be conical and uh, what is the other word? Conical and straight. The female has a vulvar waist. Here you can see the vulvar waist. The female has a vulvar waist. Okay. Morphology of the eggs. We saw the unfertilized eggs versus the fertilized eggs. The unfertilized egg basically you cannot see anything. They are all full, it's full of granules. Fertilized one you can see a large unsegmented ovum inside can you see it large unsegmented ovum this one okay so then uh, the unfertilized one is actually going to have very thin uh, uh, what do you say border is it what is it called thin thinner irregular mammillated coat it is going to have and it is going to have an atrophied ovum right it has atrophied ovum because it did it's not fertilized it's elliptical it's longer now the fertilized ones are bile stained they are saying okay the fertilized one they are bile stained if this is not bile stained then shouldn't this change this color okay anyways moving on coming to the life cycle and pathogenesis we saw that man is the natural host there is no intermediate host it will live in the soil for several years it can live in the soil the infective form is the embryonated egg which contains the a rab dt form lava okay so in the soil itself it will mould twice correct the soil also it moulds twice <clears throat> now look at this this is the life cycle pathogenesis so basically let's start here the man eats the vegetable which is contaminated with the rab dt form rab dt form larva okay if this rab dt form lava he eats it goes to his duodenum there it will undergo, uh, it will it will come out, you know, this larva and it is very actively motile larva. What it will do? It will burrow into the duodenum, uh, into the mucosa, it will burrow, 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 it will go to the uh, blood, through blood it will reach the portal vein, to, through portal vein it will reach the liver. From liver it will reach the blood supply, it will go back to the heart, heart from heart it will go to the lung. In lung it will stay for so many days, there it will do two molds again, it will grow nicely in the lung. And then it will ascend upwards into the trachea. Then it makes us swallow it. We swallow the larva. Then the larva again reaches the intestine where it will develop into an adult form. The adult form, uh, so I am guessing here uh, we uh, this man got infected with a female and a male uh, raptidity form larva. Now both of them reach here. There is one female, one male and then they are going to copulate. When they copulate, um, uh, the gravid female will release the eggs. They can release unfertilized eggs or fertilized eggs. Remember these adult forms, they can survive for 1 to 2 years, okay. Their lifespan is 1 to 2 years. So then you have this unfertilized egg and the fertilized egg. So unfertilized egg, you can see the granules, correct. You can see the granules here. And in fertilized egg, you can see the large unsegmented ovum. This, in the feces of this guy, there are a lot of such fertilized eggs, right. So these uh, fertilized eggs, what happen? They will undergo two molds and become a rabdidi form larva okay now this rabdidi form larva is the infective form then the man will consume it so this is the cycle in the soil and that is the cycle in the man so this is the life cycle and pathogenicity okay so now let us move on to let us move on to the clinical features okay 
Clinical features of um, Ascaris lumbricoides. The disease is called as Ascariasis. The symptoms due to migrating larva and symptoms due to adult larva. Let us look at both of them. Because of migrating larva, there can be allergic reaction. Okay. And uh, there can be Ascaris pneumonia, which is characterized by low-grade fever, dry cough, asthmatic wheezing, utericaria, eosinophilia, mot motled, motled lung <coughs> infiltration and the chest radiograph. The chest radiograph chest radiograph that is x-ray you can see the motled lung infiltration okay the sputum is going to be blood tinged and may contain charcot laden crystals even the sputum sputum will have blood tinge and charcot laden crystals okay these are important words that you should write in the exam pneumonia means there will be fever then asthmatic wheezing wheezing etc right eosinophilia motelled lung eosinophilia all these words you should write in the exam okay cough will be there dry cough <clears throat> but then they are saying sputum here <clears throat> then this condition where you know um, the larva may occasionally be found in sputum they are often uh, found, seen in gastric wash Whatever this is, Leuffler syndrome. Okay. Leuffler syndrome, you should remember. <clears throat> then what happens? These are all because of the migrating larva. Okay. These clinical features are generally, they are clear in one to two weeks. It may be severe and uh, it may even be fatal. Leuffler syndrome can be caused by hypersensitivity to other agents. Moving on to the <clears throat> symptoms due to the adult worm. Due to the adult worm, what can happen? Okay, so due to the adult worm, clinical manifestations due to adult worm, they vary from asymptomatic infection to severe infection to even fatal consequences. Okay, so here always you remember it can be asymptomatic to severe to fatal. Okay, anything can happen. Now coming to this um, asymptomatic infection. In asymptomatic infection, what will happen? Generally seen in mild infected cases. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the pathologic effects. Now let us move on to from asymptomatic over. Pathologic effects which uh, when present are caused by spoliative action, toxic action, mechanical action and wandering effects so they are telling here because of spoliative that is a robbing type of action so the in those parasites they rob us of our proteins and vitamin e okay spoliative action will be there so usually seen when the worms burden is heavy the worms may be present in enormous numbers exceeding even 500 occupying large part of the intestinal tract they interfere with the proper digestion and absorption of food Ascaris may contribute to protein energy malnutrition and vitamin A deficiency. Patients, they have loss of appetite and uh, the list, you know, it's a long list. Abnormalities of jejunal mucosa are often present, including broadening and shortening of villi, elongation of crypts. So, all these intestinal problems will be there. Okay. Let's just move on to the next effect here, toxic effect. Toxic effect due to the hypersensitivity to the worm antigens. Okay, hypersensitivity to the worm antigens. So, they will manifest as fever, utericaria, angioneurotic, edema, wheezing, conjunctivitis. Okay, the person, look at this, angioneurotic edema. These are more often seen in persons who come in contact with the worms occupationally as in laboratory technicians, etc. Okay, so these are toxic effects. Then mechanical effects, uh, mechanical effects are like, uh, you can see here intestinal obstruction. They are the most important manifestations. Mechanical effects can be due to masses of worms causing luminal occlusion or even a single worm infiltration into a vital area. So <clears throat> the adult worm, what it will do? No, it will live in the small, in the upper part of the small intestine. Okay, and they will they'll maintain their position there. 
and then what will happen due to um, they, they'll stimulate reflex peristalsis causing recurrent and often severe colicky pain in the abdomen so they'll cause some colicky pain in the abdomen just look at this so what obviously the in, um, these worms do the worms may be clumped together into a mass filling the lumen leading to volvulus intersusception intestinal obstruction and intestinal perforation so what they are saying is so what is volvulus uh, the intestine loops okay the loop of intestine twists around itself then coming to ectopic ascariasis that is wanderlust the worms are restless wanderers apparently showing great inquisitiveness so they want to explore our body they tend to probe and probe and insinuate themselves into the aperture they find on the way so what they will do when the host is ill and um, the temperature is above 9, uh, 39 degrees centigrade the male worm is more responsive to illness okay the worm the worm will wander everywhere you know up and down the gut it will in, enter the biliary tract pancreatic duct it will cause acute biliary obstruction pancreatitis it will enter the liver this male night is just moving 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 especially when male worms okay when the host has fever if host ha is febrile okay greater than 39 degree centigrade male worms especially they like to wander they like to wander they reach the pancreas they reach the biliary tract they cause obstruction pancreatitis then they move to esophagus they come out through nose or mouth yuck nose or mouth they can come out they go to trachea they go to lung they go to appendix they cause obstructive appendicitis it may lead to peritonitis when it perforates the intestine generally at weak spots such as the typhoid or tuberculous ulcers so whenever there is ulcer if there is ulcer if there is ulcer then they go to peritonitis okay they go to the peritoneum okay so this tendency makes preoperative deworming necessary before any gastrointestinal surgery in endemic areas the wandering worm may also reach kidney so deworming is very important before doing any gastrointestinal surgery so that, that is all about this horror story like uh, for the pathogenicity of ascaris lumbricoides so this was the these are the clinical features you see in because of the migrating larva allergic reaction pneumonia sputum lungs everything to do with the lungs right so migrating larva in symptoms due to adult larva mostly is because of the intestine right ectopic ascariasis wanderlust <clears throat> spoliative action toxic action mechanical action all this you will write in the exam no doubt at all now we will move on to laboratory diagnosis just to give you a, a brief the demonstration of the eggs in the stools finding the larva in the sputum finding an adult worm in the stool or the sputum so you will do what and all examination stool examination and sputum examination you will do you can draw the eggs and all that and explain their morphology okay in sputum you will find that charcot laden crystals blood tinged sputum etc so how will you detect the adult worm adult worm can occasionally be detected in the stool or the sputum by naked eye itself you can see this uh, worm <clears throat> okay so you will purgate the person and collect the stool and uh, you can see standard stuff you write here <clears throat> zero diagnosis antibodies etc you can detect by elisa indirect hemagglutination immunofluorescence assay okay all this you can do you can also do blood test okay for what cbc you can do eosinophilia can be there right eosinophilia can be there okay so this is a very 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 high level lab diagnosis coming to the treatment 
Mebendazole, pyrantel, palmoate and albendazole actually are the drug of uh, first line of drugs for nematodes. Look at the drugs here for nematodes. Mebendazole, pyrantel, palmoate, albendazole. For ascaris, for hookworm and for pinworm, these are the drugs. Mebendazole, pyrantel, palmoate and albendazole. Second choice will be piperazine and levamisole. Anyways, for the other types of nematodes, you have mebendazole, ivermectin, uh, DEC, that is diethyl carbamazine, etc. Anyways, here we are focusing on ascaris, so you should know mebendazole, pyrantel, palmoate and albendazole. Okay. That's it about Ascaris Lumbricoids. We'll meet in the next video. Bye-bye.